If you're dealing with chronic fatigue, brain fog, mood swings, or weird symptoms that your doctor can't explain, there's a good chance that toxic metals are playing a role. Not always the main cause, but often a missing piece of the puzzle that keeps people stuck. So in this video, we'll go through exactly what heavy metals are, why we all carry some of them in our bodies, how they mess with your energy production, and why they are linked to fatigue and other health issues. We will also cover an important concept called ionic mimicry that helps explain why metals can be so sneaky. Okay, so to start, what even are heavy metals and why are they so problematic? Heavy metals are a group of dense, naturally occurring elements. So things like lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, and aluminum. Aluminum is technically a light metal, so it should rather be called a toxic metal instead of a heavy metal, but that's besides the point. Some people also include things like copper and iron here, but only when they're in excess and not properly usable by the body. The big problem with heavy metals is that your body has no nutritional use for most of them, and once they're in, they're very hard to get out. They tend to accumulate in tissues, especially your brain, fat, bones, and liver, and they can sit there quietly for years without causing obvious symptoms. But once your body starts mobilizing them, or once they hit a certain threshold, that's when you might start noticing things like low energy, inflammation, poor memory, anxiety, or even weird skin problems. This brings me to why we all carry some heavy metals in us. The truth is that toxic metals are everywhere. You don't have to work in a factory or live near a chemical plant to be exposed. Some of the most common sources include mercury from old dental fillings or eating too much high mercury fish like tuna, lead, which used to be in gasoline and paint, and some old still have lead pipes, cadmium from tobacco or marijuana, arsenic, which is naturally found in rice and some groundwater, and aluminum from deodorants, canned foods, cookware, or even aluminum foil. So even if you live a healthy lifestyle, you're still going to pick up some of these metals over time. They're just too persistent in our environment. And if your body isn't great at getting rid of them, they will slowly build up, which is often the case for people with fatigue or immune issues. Now let's talk about the most important part of this video, how heavy metals drain your energy. To understand this, we need to talk about mitochondria. These are your body's tiny power plants, the part of the cell that produces ATP, which is the energy currency that your body runs on. The problem is that many heavy metals interfere directly with mitochondrial function. So mercury and arsenic can block enzymes that are crucial for mitochondrial energy production, especially in the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Lead can interfere with heme production, which your mitochondria need to shuttle electrons properly. Aluminum can reduce mitochondrial membrane potential, which essentially lowers the voltage that drives energy production. And the end result will pretty much always be the same. Your mitochondria can't make as much ATP, so you feel tired even if you've slept nine hours. It's not that your body isn't trying, it's just that it doesn't have the resources or the clean internal environment to do its job. This is one of the reasons why people with chronic fatigue often don't respond to the basic fixes like sleeping more, getting better food, or more exercise. If the mitochondria are clogged with toxins, the system won't run no matter how good the fuel is. And here's also where things get even more interesting. Heavy metals don't just block enzymes and clog up cells, they actually replace the minerals that your body needs. This is called ionic mimicry, and the idea is very simple. Toxic metals often look chemically similar to essential minerals. So if your body is low in them, so let's say zinc or magnesium, for example, it might accidentally use cadmium or aluminum in its place. This can happen at the level of enzymes, transport proteins, ion channels, pretty much anywhere that minerals are supposed to go. Let me give you a few examples so you understand this. Lead mimics calcium and can get stored in bones. Cadmium mimics zinc. Mercury can interfere with selenium and sulfur-based enzymes. Aluminum can sneak in where magnesium is supposed to go. And arsenic competes with phosphorus and also selenium. This is a big deal because your body ends up building enzymes and proteins that don't actually work properly. It's like assembling a machine with the wrong parts. It might look okay on the outside, but it's not going to run very well. And here's the problem. If you try to detox these metals without first fixing the mineral deficiencies, that caused them to build up in the first place, you might actually make things worse. Because you take away the only fake parts that your body was using, and now it's left with nothing. That's why replenishing minerals is one of the first steps in any good detox protocol. And this isn't just important for energy production. There are many other symptoms that can be caused by heavy metal toxicity. 
Here's a quick list. You can stumble into things like brain fog or memory issues because mercury and aluminum are neurotoxic and have been linked to cognitive decline. Or you can have anxiety and mood swings because metals can mess with neurotransmitter balance and increase oxidative stress in the brain. Or hormone issues because some metals disrupt thyroid function or mimic estrogen. These are called metalloestrogens and the most potent would be copper. And then you have immune dysfunction because especially arsenic and cadmium can suppress immune cells or make you more prone to autoimmune issues. So as you can see, it's not just about fatigue, it's a much bigger picture. And that's why some people with vague chronic symptoms that no one can really explain will finally start feeling better when they address the heavy metal burden. So how do you do that? Well, here's a quick roadmap to get started. First, don't jump into chelation therapy. It's often too harsh and can make people feel worse. Instead, test your mineral levels and see which deficiencies you have and which potential toxins have built up in your system. And then you want to replenish those minerals. So you want to fill the parking spots in your body where the toxic metals are sitting and replace them with the mineral counterparts. Next, you want to support liver, bioflow, and kidney function. These are your main detox organs and need to be working well before you start pushing metals out. For more active support, you can then use things like sulfur, selenium, and antioxidants. These help your body bind and eliminate metals gently. You want to go slow because detox should never feel like it's a war inside your body. So slow and steady really is the way to go. I go over the complete protocol in much more detail in other videos that I will link in the description. If you're new to heavy metals and not sure where to start, I also have a detox masterclass that walks you through everything step by step. It shows you how to support your liver, open up your drainage pathways and safely get rid of toxins like heavy metals, but also things like microplastics or excess estrogen without crashing your system. It's perfect for beginners who want a clear practical plan that actually works. To wrap up this video, let me say that heavy metals aren't always the whole story when it comes to chronic fatigue, but they're a massively overlooked piece of it. They clog up your energy systems, steal your mineral reserves and create a lot of oxidative stress that will wear down your body over time. But with the right approach, so one that's gentle, nutrient focused and supports your body's own elimination systems, you can slowly get rid of them over time. And when you do, a lot of symptoms that seem very mysterious or impossible to fix can start to improve.